Finally tonight, remembering the legacy of Helen Gurley Brown. She rose to national attention with the publication of a 1962 bestseller that quickly became a cultural touchstone, Sex and the Single Girl. Single girls weren't supposed to have any sex life. That was not the case, of course. They always have and they always will, but it was sort of uh, sub rosa, underground. Helen Gurley Brown, 40 and married at the time, had a larger message. Women could have it all, career, sex, marriage, and more. She promoted those ideas as the editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan magazine for more than three decades. Some articles had a feminist tone. Others offered fashion tips and advice on landing a man. Brown defended them all. The accusation, if I may, that Cosmo is a sex manual and we deal prolifically and prodigiously and eternally and everlastingly with sex, sex, sex. Yes, we have always covered that particular topic willingly, gladly, happily, enthusiastically. Brown was ousted as editor of the American edition of Cosmopolitan in 1997, but she stayed on as editor of its international editions for years. She died in New York yesterday at 90. Some memories and thoughts now about Helen Gurley Brown from a writer who knew her well for many years. Gail Sheehy wrote about her for the Daily Beast. She's the author of 16 books, and she writes for Vanity Fair and other publications. Gail Sheehy, good to see you again. Happy to be with you, Judy. You knew, as we said, Helen Gurley Brown very well. Tell us a little about her life uh, that would help us understand how she became the person she was. Well. She turned her back on a conventional woman's life at the age of seven, and that was 1929. Um, she was, came from nothing. Uh, her father died early. Her mother was impoverished. She had a crippled sister. She was really a Horatio Alger hero with the Holly Golightly thrown in, and she uh, emanated uh, a new American dream, the idea of the self-made woman. And where did that come from? You were telling us today there was this self-reliance uh, that stood out in Helen Gurley Brown. What, what did that come from? Uh, she just, she was a very plucky girl. Uh, she didn't want to be a, a hillbilly left in, in Arkansas. Uh, she wanted to be a successful woman. And she had the idea that she could actually do that without getting married until she got good and ready and found Mr. Wright. Uh, and she managed to get that idea across to working class women, ordinary women, living in hard scrabble towns all over America with not much to look forward to, but, you know, maybe a job at the five and ten, uh, a boss husband, and no control over the, over the, all the children they might have. But, you know, there was a real um, uh, social uh, uh, serendipity here. The birth control pill came along the same year that Helen Gurley Brown <laughs> published Sex and the Single Girl, and that allowed her to uh, give a new idea to women, to, to take the same prerogatives that young men had always taken, to uh, enjoy a long, lusty prelude to marriage, if they married at all, and to spend the rest of the time building a successful career. That was a totally new idea in the, in the early 60s. And, and her book came out a year before The Feminine Mystique and nine years before Gloria Steinem brought out Ms. Magazine. So what was her, how would you describe what her relationship was with the women's movement? Well, she never, she wasn't an ideologue. She wasn't the least bit political, but she had a vision. And that vision was of women becoming, you know, making their own choices. So she was uh, parallel to the women's movement, but she was never, you know, a card-carrying feminist, and that got her into a lot of trouble with the, with the women's movement. Uh, but that movement went off, you know, a little bit uh, to the extremes as well. Helen stayed on her uh, message all the way through her life into her well, well into her 80s. And, you know, the, the proof of it is, is that magazine is in uh, 70 or 80 countries around the world, including Muslim countries. Um, and it continues to carry that same message around the world. What would you, how would you describe, uh, Gail Sheehy, what the, the platform, what, what was the message that she most wanted to get across to women? 
She wanted to say you can make your own choices in life. You don't have to have uh, money. You don't have to have a man. You have to have grit and hard work and self-discipline. Uh, take the jobs that nobody else wants. She took 17 jobs as secretaries and uh, made her way through many bosses who wanted to play pinch and tickle until she found the man that she uh, thought was worthy of her and married a man and believed strongly in a partnership between a man and a woman to achieve success. She married a Hollywood producer. Uh, and in fact, David Brown gave her the idea for her first book from letters she'd written as a single girl. He also campaigned with her to get her the job as the editor of Cosmo, and he wrote all the yeah. cover lines, all and those I, saucy cover lines. And I wanted to ask you about that because she had never been an editor when she became uh, the editor of Cosmopolitan. That was really something that they pulled off, wasn't it? Absolutely. The two of them pulling that off. David had been an editor earlier of the uh, post-war Cosmo, which was going into the, uh, into the trash bin. Uh, and there, but the minute Helen took over, she totally turned that around. And from a very frumpy magazine, you know, meant for suburban housewives, uh, suddenly there was cleavage. Suddenly there were women saying, you know, I want the same prerogatives that young men have. Um, it was a scandal at the time, but she kept saying outrageous things and putting on outrageous covers. And interestingly, she didn't look anything like a Cosmo cover girl. She was skinny, flat-chested, pockmarked, uh, but that allowed her to connect with these ordinary working-class girls who had no idea that there was another way to live uh, except, you know, under the rules of the patriarchy. And, and uh, if you had to sum it up, what would you say is the legacy? Clearly, we've come a long way since the 1960s when she started right. Cosmopolitan. Well, it, I think that we still, we've learned that it isn't ex as easy as saying women can have it all, which was really Helen's uh, uh, idea. You know, she never had any children. Uh, neither did Gloria Steinem. Uh, it's when you have children along with wanting to have a high-powered career and a marriage that's really meaningful uh, that the rubber meets the road. And so, you know, women can have it all, but not all at once. Uh, and I think we've come to learn that. Gail Sheehy, Remembering Helen Gurley Brown. Thank you very much.